I really don't know what it's doing. <laughs> you're here with me today. Today I have a lot to do. Uh, so I actually wanted to start off with some of my problem plants, some of the plants right now that are uh, not too happy with me. I don't know about you guys, but when I get really busy, sometimes my plants get neglected and they need some TLC. So today I'm going to do some TLC um, as well as actually I got some shelving put up and I kind of have a whole new plant space that I wanted to share with you guys as I decorated it and just kind of what I did to make it plant friendly. So let's go ahead and get into it and I'm gonna start with these. So <laughs> these guys are, like I said, some of the victims of my neglect. Um, this one in particular, this is my lipstick plant or my curly lipstick plant. And I have a feeling it got over watered and then got root rot and now it is just kind of falling apart um, a bunch of leaves are falling off and it's getting crispy and I just don't have good hopes about the roots of this one as you can see like all of these leaves uh, came off I tried to repot it I think the last week to see if it could like recoup and it does not seem hopeful in fact, like the roots are still damp. I don't know. I don't I don't know about this one, guys. I don't know how I feel about this. I'm just gonna check in the roots. They don't look horrible, but the plant's just not in great shape. So I'm kind of thinking that I'm gonna take cuttings and just re-root the whole thing. Um because it's, it's starting to look rough. I think that's honestly what I'm going to end up doing. So let's go ahead and do that. I have my shears over here. And they are sterilized. I used them earlier. So. And I'm going to say I'm kind of sad to be kind of chopping this plant up. Honestly. Um, you know. I This is one of those plants that I got as like a redemption plant. To kind of redeem myself from a previous plant death. But. I just don't think it's gonna kind of come back from whatever is going on with the roots. So we're gonna start over and it's gonna be fine. It's not exactly what I wanted to do, but whatever, it'll be okay. Okay, so that's that chopped. I'm probably gonna see what I can do about removing some of the bottom leaves just to kind of make it more water rooting friendly. I don't tend to leave leaves on the bottom of a cutting, like what I'm doing, water rooting, um, just cause I feel like it's not, oh yeah, that was, ooh, that's not good. Okay, so definitely the right choice for whatever reason, this plant has like crispy stems. So good choice on my part, making sure that this one I'm gonna cut it back actually to the green. Um, there we go. So I just kind of worry about having uh, leaves in water as I'm rooting, just because I don't want it to rot, I don't want it to cause problems. So I do kind of strip usually like the bottom leaves off just to be sure that, you know, I'm not asking for rotting trouble. a shame this was like a whole new one i think that'll be fine though like i don't think it's gonna cause any problems this one i'm probably gonna have to cut back a little bit more uh this video is a little late this week and i swear i have a good reason uh i was in the middle of filming yesterday which is why my counter is already a mess and my phone died so I took it as a sign. I already was filming pretty late and it just was not the day yesterday for filming. I will still maybe insert some of the footage um, from yesterday. That way you guys can see what I was working on. Basically I am repotting, rehabbing, just 
doing a couple cleanups on some plants this week. And I also, at the end of this video, have a really special surprise. Um, I got some shelving put up that has opened up a brand new plant space in my home and I'm really excited about it. Um, and while this video is not sponsored, I did get sent something really, really exciting by a really cool brand that I'm gonna share with you guys. So let's go ahead and get into this. I'm gonna start with the plants in front of me. So the first plant that I'm working on today is gonna be this golden pothos. Um, I <laughs> did have a golden pothos and I still have like some cuttings from it, but it got mealybugs really, really bad. And it got to the point where it was just like, I was not managing this inside anymore. I kind of ignored it for too long. So I put it outside in the greenhouse with the ladybugs or at least that was the goal and unfortunately it ended up getting really really burnt um i do now have a sunshade in the greenhouse that should prevent that from happening again in the future but i did not at the time and that's actually what convinced me to get the sunshade because it was pretty bad um and just not really salvageable for the most part but it was just not really salvageable there was a few spots that maybe possibly like i took some clippings of and i'll see if they root um but probably you know not gonna do the best so i did just go ahead and buy a brand new one um i was thinking about just taking more clippings from my mom's house again but this one was on sale at walmart uh when i did a late night walmart run so I did go ahead and pick it up. Um, it's not the highest variegation golden pothos, but that's fine. It, my main concern was that it's just a little bit larger um, than you know cuttings would be initially. So it'll fit into the wall a little better, I feel like. It is a little bit root bound though. You can see from these roots here, there is a ton of just like, roots at the bottom coiled around and that's a good indicator to me that they had outgrown that pot which is fine i'm not going to break it up too much i'm just trying to trying to uncoil some of these roots at the bottom um and that's just going to give it a little boost on rooting into the new substrate here but when roots coil like that that is a pretty good indicator that it is ready for a repot because it has reached the bottom of the pot and is running out of space so that's about as much as I'm really gonna uncoil that. I'm fine with the soil that's in here. It seems mostly like cocoa core heavy, um, which is not really a big deal for me. So especially for pothos, they're so resilient. They just do not care. And this pot, I will say, is not all that much bigger. In fact, it's probably about the same size, just a little bit deeper as what it was in. However, this is the size pot that goes on my wall. So this is what it is getting popped into and if at some point in the future I do have to trim down the roots a little bit, that's fine. doesn't really bother me, but I just wanted to kind of loosen them up. That way they can reach the bottom of this pot. All right. And I really barely have to even backfill. I'm going to put maybe a little bit of soil around the edges, but it's pretty happy. And I actually am just reusing the soil um, from yesterday. I had a couple plants that I unpotted that had been recently potted so they weren't um, like the soil wasn't you know gone or anything it was still perfectly serviceable soil I just those plants needed some help more than uh, the soil could give them so those ones are now chopped up in little pieces which is fine um, they'll root up I think no problem just gonna have to give them a little bit of time but there we go First plant is done. I have a new golden pothos. It is pretty cute. Pothos are one of my favorite kind of easy house plants. And this one, I'm pretty, I'm pretty okay with. I like I said, it's not the highest irrigation, but I think it'll be pretty. Okay, actually, let me move that over a little bit. I don't want to block y'all's view. Okay. So the next thing that I'm gonna do uh, is actually this gloriosum over here. I have three leaves on currently. When I got it, it had three leaves or maybe four leaves. I think three or four. Um, however, the oldest leaves have all died off now. And because they have died off, I have a whole bunch of stem over here. 
So what I'm planning on doing is actually notching this stem. Um, and if you watched, I believe it was, I want to say it was Unplant Parenthood who did a video on notching. I actually had notched this plant prior, but I didn't insert any plastic into the notches. And I feel like because I didn't insert any plastic, uh, the notching really didn't take. I haven't seen any activity on those growth points. So that's what I'm going to do today. I'm going to actually go back in. And this is actually just a lid of one of my uh, soup containers. <laughs> I eat a lot of like these little pre-prepped soups for lunch at work because they're quick and they're easy. And when I'm having like a rough week or whatever, it's just a lot easier than making my food every day for lunch. And I don't really feel bad about eating them. So I'm just going to cut up one of those lids because I have them in abundance. I like to use them for like saucers while I'm watering and stuff like that. So I keep them around but I think this will be fine. And this is an alcohol wipe, so I am sterilizing them. That way they don't spread anything from, you know, anywhere that it's touched to this plant. And then I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna turn that toward you guys. I think you can see it all right. Ooh, and I already have another growth point under here. Oh my goodness. That is so cute. That's so exciting. Okay, so this actually, this was the original stem here and then it kind of turned off. I really don't know what it's doing. It looks like I think it's kind of was here and then it went sharply here and now it's going that way, which all right, whatever, whatever this plant is happy doing, that's fine, but a little weird for sure. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna take these scissors and I'm gonna cut this way. So I'm not going to cut the end of the stem like this. I'm going to cut down like this. And that's what's going to give me that kind of notching situation. And I'm not cutting all the way through the stem. In fact, I'm being pretty careful to not uh, cut too far in. I'm going to go ahead and... Okay, one. I'm cutting maybe about halfway to three quarters of the way through the stem. Okay. And I think I'm gonna do one more. I originally only did the two, but I do have another leaf that's died off since then. Um, so I think I am gonna do a third one. There we go. Okay, so the purpose of the plastic is actually to prevent the plant from healing over from where you've notched. So notching in general, what it's supposed to do is activate the growth points along the stem that haven't been activated. Just like if you were to chop it up into like little pieces to propagate um, in like little like one stick nodes, something like that, or one node sticks, um, this is going to have quite a similar effect. So those little nodes that I can see along the stem i'm cutting in between the nodes and putting a piece of plastic so that the plant thinks it's damaged or that that's severed off and it puts out growth from that new node so the hope is that by severing about halfway through and then putting plastic in there so it cannot heal back up it will activate those growth points and i will start to see some new growth on this plant especially like i said because this vine here is pretty bare and I would like a really full pot of Gloriosum. Um, for whatever reason, this like kind of shape of leaf, like this big heart shape is just so pretty and I really do enjoy it. So I would like to have a fuller pot of this. And I actually did find spire mites or at least webbing on this plant a couple of days ago, actually on the newest leaf. And I did spray them off and I believe I've gotten, pretty much gotten them, um, but I am just kind of looking as I'm here. I see like a little bit of webbing in between. I'm actually gonna just take this little alcohol away because alcohol kills most plant pests on contact. There we go. 
So just swiping away that little bit of webbing, like it's so minor that I really not concerned about it. Um, I do have more uh, beneficial bugs or predatory mites coming in the mail. So I plan to release those. Uh, I'm getting towards the point where the Amblyseus cucumeris, I believe is what they were called, um, that I previously released, I'm getting towards the point where those probably have died off and it is best to kind of re-up. Um, this time I'm going with the Amblyseus uh, Swarovski, I believe is what they're called. I even wanted to say Swarovski, but they're not crystals, they're bugs. Um, but I'm going with those and I think that will give me a pretty good result insofar as keeping down some pests. They are known to be pretty uh, varied with their diet, so they can go um, through thrips, spider mites, all of those. And I actually am looking to see uh, maybe if I can get maybe some broth mite control. Um, we're gonna see. But that is this plant done. I do have it notched. I'm gonna move it a little bit closer so you guys can see. There we go. I hope you can see the notching there. Ooh, that is really heavy. Ooh, okay, but that's the notching. Um, I did, like I said, go ahead and put those little plastic pieces in there. So I'm gonna pop this girl back in her window and we'll be back in a moment. Okay, so next up, I wanna get into this guy. So this is my Begonia Sinbad. And I am kind of in love with this plant. I can't even lie. It is, I mean, just... Let, let me let me show you guys up close real quick how gorgeous this plant is if you can see these leaves are just absolutely beautiful and she is so big um however she is in this really tiny pot and actually i think this pot is a good size for her like i don't see her roots popping out or anything and she doesn't seem to dry out incredibly fast but she's almost toppling over like 90% of the time. So even though she's growing really, really well, I'm actually gonna take some cuttings um, just to kind of maybe balance her out a little bit and also maybe make a fuller pot. That way when I do repot this one, I will have a couple more to add in there. But I haven't thought about where to take these cuttings yet. So I'm gonna kind of tell you guys or walk you guys through my process here. So when I'm looking for a spot to take new cuttings, I definitely want to make sure that I am looking at the nodes. Um, I believe begonia can also root from anywhere along their stem. And when I say also, I'm referring to like Hoya lipstick plants, as I was kind of talking about yesterday. So if I did insert that footage, you guys would have seen it by now. But I believe begonia can root from anywhere along their stems. I know like begonia rexes, you can regrow from just a leaf, which is pretty cool. Um, so I'm not too terribly worried about that, though I do, you know, still kind of keep an eye on it. And I'm also looking at like branch points. So like down here, as you guys can see, there's a whole separate branch on this side of the begonia. And I don't really want to cut that off. And like there's some spots like where I can see like new growth is coming out of. In fact, there's a lot of new growth on this plant and she's even blooming for me. So she was like she did come in bloom like i will say that like she was in bloom when she got here but she's definitely oops, there we go she's definitely put out some new blooms since arriving which i mean i don't really think i did any, anything to encourage but i will accept it i i appreciate uh, that she is happy so i'm just kind of considering i know that if i cut those off the blooms are gonna die back which is fine i mean that's not like a huge deal or anything but I'm just kind of seeing, so I might, I think, cut this branch here. Okay, so that's one. And this kind of breaks my heart to do, by the way, guys. Like, I'm not just, like, doing this all willy-nilly. I love how beautiful this plant is. But she really, really needs some help. And actually she's putting out a whole new branch on this side too actually multiple new branches wow she is going wild okay all right and i think i'm gonna she also has some new growth coming from the base so i'm kind of trying to balance her out a little bit as i'm doing this hmm. 
I will, at some point I think I'm gonna like maybe readjust her to where she's more upright. Like when I repot her, I think that's what I'm gonna try to make my goal. So I don't wanna cut like too much off because I don't think it's gonna be that big of a deal because she'll be up like this. But maybe I will cut like here. And I'm doing this one to encourage branching from any of the other points along this stem. So if you look at begonias, they have all sorts of growth points. Like they are almost like Franken uh, plants. Like you can see here, like she has brand new growth coming in and she has like little growth spikes all along every node where she's gonna be putting out more growth. So my thought is if I cut, you know, the tops, it will encourage branching from the bottoms. And considering like she has a pretty bare stem down here, I would like to do that. So I think that's about as far as I'm gonna trim her back. I know right now she looks pretty weird. Um, and I've locked the dog door today, so the Corgi is voicing his displeasure. But she does look pretty weird, um, but I am gonna pop her into some water. Begonias will root anytime, anywhere, anyhow. So I think in water, she will do just fine. So give me one second, I'm gonna grab a vessel and I'll be right back. Okay, so I did go ahead and grab a vessel. This is like a little whiskey glass or like tumbler from, I wanna say I got this one from the dollar store. Yeah, I think this was from the dollar store actually yesterday. Um, I love the dollar store for glasses like this. And while I did purchase this one for like a pond type plant, um, I think it's gonna work just fine for rooting these begonia in. It gives them a little bit of space. And I did remove the bottom leaves from some of these. Some of them I don't really want to mess with because they actually, like this one has a stem. And actually, I think I'm gonna even cut this one into another cutting because otherwise I'm gonna end up with the same problem again, which is that this is too tall and it is like arced backwards. So I think that's gonna work a little bit better. And it's, it's gonna put out new growth just like the other cuttings will, so I don't see that being a problem. I'm looking at this one, I maybe want to shorten it up just a little bit. And actually, maybe I'll just do like that. And if this like little stick doesn't end up putting out growth, that's fine. It's not gonna be that huge of a deal, but it will give kind of, I think this guy a more, uh, a, like a better chance at looking like a nicer plant when it does get uh, some growth coming in. So that is that. I have all of these popped in here. There we go. And I'm just going to fill this glass with some water and that's going to be it for those. I think that'll root up nicely. I'm actually really excited to watch those grow. Um, I think I mentioned it in one of my last videos, but I did purchase the Begonia Sinbad because Wild Fern has a really, really beautiful one and it kind of led me to want to get one for my own. So I did, and I would now really like to see it turn into like a big, beautiful plant. I know begonias can be like almost trees. Like I think they actually are trees, correct me if I'm wrong, um, but they can get huge. So I would love to see this one get really big. Um, I don't know if that's gonna be possible in the space that I have for it, but we'll see. So I'm gonna go ahead and fill that jar up with water and I think there might be one or two other plants that I do want to do some work on today. So I will go ahead and grab those. So I remembered the last plant that I wanted to do some TLC on and it is this guy. This, uh, as you guys probably saw in one of my recent videos, is my uh, Monstera Dubia. And obviously it looks a little kind of wild. Um, there's a lot going on obviously, <laughs> and this stick is not really doing it many favors. So I did, I believe, pledge in that video to do something about this plant. Anyways, but today is the day I'm going to finally do something about this poor plant. Um, I did order, I think these are 18 inch paint store stirrer sticks, and I have seen these used before for Monstera Dubias, and I think uh, it was actually recommended to me in one of my comments as well on that video that I'm talking about. And if you haven't seen it, I'll link it up here for you. Um, but yeah, I decided I'm gonna go ahead and see what I can do 
to give this plant a little bit more support, uh, especially support that it can hopefully kind of climb up or latch onto. There we go. So I'm just kind of back filling a little bit here. And like I said, this soil is still perfectly fine, so it's not gonna hurt anything. Okay. I might have to add a rock or two in here uh, to help support this stick. And actually maybe I can I don't know how that much that's gonna help, but we'll see. Okay. So then this, I'm gonna kind of, okay. This is all kinds of disorderly, <laughs> as you guys can probably see. Let me actually turn this, that way I'm looking at it. And I probably am going to need some green tape. And because we are getting a little tight on time, I'm just going to probably make do with what I have and maybe fidget with this later. But I did just kind of want to show you guys what I'm doing to get this up on this stake or this uh, kind of wood plank here. I am going to put the newer vine underneath, I think. And I'm only doing that because the newer vine, I feel like has a better chance of attaching than the older vine really does. Um, it has fresher uh, aerial roots and it's growing more straight <laughs> um, than the uh, first like original vine is. So I think it'll have a better chance of actually getting attached to this plank over time. So I'm just kind of cinching that down. Anyways, but the dogs definitely have a lot to say today. Um, I don't know what has set them off, but they are definitely keen to tell me about it. Anyone who has dogs probably understands. All right, I'm gonna make another kind of attachment point here, I think, yeah. And I think this is another plant that honestly is going to benefit a lot from me having a shade cloth in the greenhouse. Um, the greenhouse gets a lot of sun, especially, you know, in the middle of the day here in Florida, it can get really, really toasty. So I just feel like the greenhouse was getting too bright and too direct sun for this plant. And I think it got burned a little bit which, you know, does happen. Um, it's not the end of the world. It'll still grow, but the leaves just aren't as pretty, I think, as they could be otherwise. And I am just, like I said, going around, tethering, making sure that all of these vines are stuck down as good as I can get them to be. And then this one kind of wanna go, uh, wants to grow sideways. So I'm gonna have maybe another little tether point up top to hold it, them all down. And what this is like a twist tie type material. I will say I prefer the Velcro. I think Velcro is a little bit gentler on your plants, but this twist tie kind of material does work. Um, I mean, it's obviously holding on there. That's really my goal. So I think that'll be fine for now. And again, and not the most stable thing in the world. Um, just kind of packing a little bit more soil on top there, maybe help stabilize it a little bit. Okay, yeah, that seems to have helped a bit. But there we go. That is my Monstera Dubia. And as you can see, it is now on this stick. Um, I think it'll be happier for sure with a flat surface to grow up against. I am hoping that over time, 
Um, this will help it grow more evenly, more uh, maturely, and eventually when I do chop and prop this plant, which I am not currently planning on doing, um, but when I do eventually chop and chop, uh, prop this plant, I think it'll be more successful with straight pieces rather than pieces that are flying every which way. So that one is done. I think this one's going to go back in the greenhouse for now. Um, let me think. Actually, maybe I could try to put it in here. I did move a few plants around uh, yesterday in that video that I was talking about earlier. So maybe I'll try to pop it in here, make it um, one of my like windowsill plants. I think it might be happy over there. We'll see. I'll, I'm going to figure it out, but I am now probably going to insert that footage that I was telling you guys about from my really exciting new uh, plant space, new shelf space, where I, you know, got these shelves. I got them up and decorated. Actually, um, my boyfriend was kind enough to hang them for me and I got them decorated and I really think they look so nice. And the, the window that's like right next to them is a north facing window so honestly none of this would be possible without Sansi grow lights. Um, Sansi did reach out to me they offered uh, to send me their product for free um, in exchange for my review so so far I really really am enjoying the product I think that the lights are really bright um, it's a gooseneck so they're really really adjustable uh, and I don't know how well my plants are going to grow under it yet. I, they haven't been under there long enough to get that impression, but I like a lot of things about this light, including the fact that wherever you put the like angle, the angle stays there. Um, and when you put the clamp on to like a shelf or something, it actually has like little rubberized soft edges. So it's not going to leave dents or mark your furniture up, which is something that I was actually really concerned about and why I haven't purchased a gooseneck light like this one up till now. But I think Sansi uh, has made a really great light here and I'm really excited to see what it does for my plants and if the plants that I have over there are going to stay happy. I think that they will, but I will definitely keep you guys updated both here and on my Instagram. So ever since I've moved in, this wall has been pretty blank pretty boring and I decided that I wanted to add a plant space here and that window to the left is a north facing window it has an overhang so there's really not a whole lot of light uh, that will hit plants here and in general I've put plants here they just don't do well so I did decide that if I was going to put something here I would need some light and as you can see Sansi grow lights um, when they reached out to me they suggested their gooseneck design uh, has those three heads on it so it is pretty adjustable and I really really am enjoying that light it's really bright and honestly it the way that it adjusts is just really simple it's easy and it doesn't like fall over like it stays where you put it which I really like and when I was trying to decide on like what plants to put on the shelf I was trying to think of plants that I thought would do well there. Number one, obviously with the lighting, it's probably going to be more of a bright indirect light situation um, as far as you know, lighting levels go. Even though grow lights are directly on something, that doesn't mean that it's necessarily like a, the equivalent of full sun. So I was choosing plants that were mostly going to be bright indirect light. And I did want to put like my little rip salis on the shelf, which I did end up doing. And my Florida Green Beauty, my Florida Green Beauty, uh, the one up top there is really bushy, it just takes up a lot of space in a good way. And I really love the way that its leaves grow, so I wanted to kind of show it off a little bit. And I wanted to have a place in my home to display more like personal items, just things that I think are kind of cool, uh, things that, you know, either I collect or are personally relevant to me, so there are also some personal um, like items on this shelf, but I did want to take advantage of the opportunity of having a shelf where I could put more plants and make them more part of my decor rather than like a jungle room. Um, as much as I love my plant room, it does turn into a jungle like 99% of the time, and it's usually pretty full of plants. So having a shelf that's more decor, kind of decorating 
I really enjoyed kind of the challenge of integrating my plants into that shelf, into that space. And I think it's turned out really well. Like I said, I, I really wanted to put the Repsalis there. I really pictured my Florida Green Beauty being up there. And as I was kind of playing around, I decided I liked the Jungle Boogie there as well. And that's the one I'm placing in this clip. I really love the way that this plant is shaped and mine in particular just kind of spreads out really nicely. Um, it's not growing on a pole or anything like that. So instead of growing vertical, it's just kind of gone a little sideways. So it's just a kind of cool and unique looking plant. And then I was kind of experimenting with adding my philodendron micans up there as well. Uh, it's been in my library and kind of trailing off the edge of one of the bookcases. And it's gotten so long, as you can probably see in one of the next clips here. It is probably almost as long as I am tall, and I'm a pretty tall person. So it didn't quite look right, and I was kind of scared. Um, we have actually have the dog crates right below the shelf, and I didn't want it trailing into the dog crates. So I was kind of fidgeting with it, seeing what I could do, and I did end up cutting it. Um, this is one of those plants, though, that I know is going to root really, really well in water. I'm not worried about propagating this plant at all. And actually cutting it back a little bit like I did is probably going to lead to a lot of new growth in the mother plant. So I'm pretty excited to see what happens there. And since I did take those cuttings, I decided to pop the mother plant back over in the library. And you'll see here in a second how much I cut off. And this plant is still like decently long, so that was kind of funny. But I did decide uh, that I was just going to probably propagate those on the shelf. And then that's my Stephania erecta. I really love this plant. It is super cool, super new, unique, and just a really interesting specimen. It has almost like flying saucer shaped leaves and it grows out of like this potato looking codex. It's just really, like I said, very unique. And it's definitely a plant that I enjoy, but I want to be able to show off in the best light. So I think this is gonna be a good spot for it as well. And there's those micans cuttings. Like I said, they're still trailing, still pretty. I really think that they're gonna root up well for me, especially in the bright light they're gonna get where they are. And then I did decide to kind of experiment with my variegated Burl Marks uh, philodendron. And I did actually end up repotting it for this project. I didn't film it uh, just because I, you know, didn't really think about it, but I did repot it into pond. It was previously rooting in perlite, so I don't imagine the pond is going to be too much of a change. Uh, note to all users, though, those lights do get really hot. I did burn my finger just a little bit, but that was my own fault. And I'm still kind of shifting things around um, here. As you can see, I decided to you know, move the Stephanie Erecta over. I don't want, even though I don't think this like these lights are going to be super like bright lights like they would be in full sun i still don't want to necessarily have them super close to leaves that aren't used to it i am kind of you know cautious about burning leaves um, even though it's harder to do with grow lights it still can happen so i don't want to burn any of the leaves i want to give them enough space to fully get used to having that much light on them before i move them any closer and as you can see in a lot of these clips, I am adjusting kind of the angle of the gooseneck light to try to make sure that it's far enough away that it's not going to burn, but it's a nice enough angle to where it will light up everything. And I was trying a bunch of other plants here. This is my philodendron Gueldii, uh, otherwise known as Thematophyllum sprucianum, I want to say. And I was kind of thinking about putting it on this shelf. The only thing is I wanted something that was more like showing outwards rather than showing height. And this is definitely a plant that if I were to put it anywhere on the shelf, it would be at the top. And I think the beauty of the leaves would be really missed. So I did not end up leaving this one on the shelf, but I did think about it. I thought it would be really pretty there. I just, this is one I want to really enjoy. So I did move it somewhere else after this, but... I did try it up there and I think that's part of the beauty of this kind of project is experimentation. So trying things, seeing what works, seeing what doesn't, 
And actually, as I was going through and putting all these plants up here, I was, you know, taking note of where they were, if I thought that was going to be enough light for them, if I thought it was going to be a good space for them. And honestly, I think it turned out really pretty. I love just kind of the way the shelf looks. I think it looks really, really nice, uh, especially, like I said, given that this was previously a blank wall. So I would love to hear you guys' thoughts and suggestions. Uh, if you want to leave me a comment down below, I would love to hear what you think. All right, you guys, that is it for this video. I hope you enjoyed getting to watch me set up and decorate my new plant space. I am so excited and so grateful uh, that Sansi did send me that light. That way I can have a previously dark, boring wall uh, now somewhere that I can place plants. Go ahead and leave me a thumbs up if you like this kind of video. Give me a comment down below. I would love to hear from you. Let me know if this video reminded you of any plants that you need to give some attention to that you've been neglecting, or if there's any dark corners that you could turn into a beautiful plant space uh, with the right grow lights. And there also is a subscribe button down there. I would love for you guys to be around here more often. So if you hit that button and subscribe, I do post new videos weekly. But that's it for today. Thanks so much. Bye.